People aren't gonna wanna hear this, and it's a bit of a hard pill to swallow, but if you're under FPV and you know what you're doing, a quad like this is not only cheaper than the Avada 2, but you can also get better results. G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and this one is going out to you FPV pilots out there who like to get some of the best footage possible. I've seen some Avada 2 footage, it looks spectacular, and this is the part that people don't wanna hear. If you know what you are doing, and you have a craft like this, yes, for cheaper, you can get better results. However, for a lot of pilots, you might not have the skills, you might not know how to fly, you might not have been doing it for a long time, this is going to be very daunting. What we're looking at today, this is from HGLRC. It's their little talon. I'm gonna put some links down below as well. There's a couple of different versions. And the beauty about the version I'm showing you today, this one's got the DJI FPV 03 air unit inside. So you are gonna get some of that gorgeous video. It's gonna get streamed straight back to you. So if you ever wanted to try FPV, or you're cruising around, you wanna get some unique footage that only craft like this can get, that the Avada 2 can't get, We'll definitely stay tuned. Now coming up in the video, we're gonna go out to the field. I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like, go through the setup, all that sort of stuff. We're also gonna show you the flight footage and hand it over to Stickman Steve as well, who will go through his impressions. And this part's important as well. We've got some comparisons where we talk about this craft and some other similar cine styles that if you're thinking about getting something like this, you need to probably consider those options as well. As a bit of an overview, like I mentioned, it has the DJI FPV system inside. Uh, it just simply binds up. I've got mine on ELRS, so I should be getting some fantastic range, cruising some things around. It has protected props. It's what we call a pusher quad. So uh, the air is getting pushed out from underneath rather than most props, I guess, sucking uh, the quad up. And if we flip it over underneath, you can see everything is kind of in one big shell. Now, something, an interesting part to note, we have five blades on each one of these motors right here. So it does feel kind of grippy in the air. I'm gonna put some little links to some other stats and things like that on the screen as well, in terms of like its weight and things like that. One little part I thought was kind of cool. You have this little micro section right here. And what that allows to do is you can simply screw something down into the middle and then it's like a little camera holder for your GoPro. So if you wanna use this and the onboard footage, that's fine. If you wanna take it to the next level and put on like the latest GoPro or action camera, you can also do that as well because that's what this is made for. It's not made for crazy freestyling, although you can still have a lot of fun with it. It is definitely not made for racing. This, it's all about filming and I understand there's definitely a huge market for it, which is why it's kind of comparable to the Avada too. It just depends what you wanna do and especially what your skills are like. Now, some little features I wanna mention before we go do the fun stuff in the field. If we flip it underneath, everything is really well protected and underneath right here, we have this little section, it simply pops open and that's when you get access to your SD card and all that sort of goodness. It was pretty easy to set up and we have our antenna on the back. It's out of the way of any props. And the last part, let me grab a battery. Here we go, here we go, got my battery. Uh, it's actually what we call toilet tank style. So it's sort of like sitting the top of the toilet or the, I don't know what you call that piece of the top of the toilet, but it goes across the quad like that. Traditionally, they go like this in most crafts. They sort of go from front to back, but this one's going from left to right. And it does mean the weight is distributed fairly evenly when you're flying this craft around. It does feel very nice to fly. So let's do it. Look. That's it on the bench. That's not the exciting part. This is the part I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna get out to the field. We're gonna fly it around and find out if you're into DJI, is this a great option? Should you get this? And we'll see what Stickman Steve thinks as well. So let's go do it. Have some fun in three, two, one. Steve, HDLRC and the Talon. What a cool place to fly around, have some fun and maybe get it lost in the drink. And also have some fixing some recording issues that I did, ha did have with this, which was kind of pissing me off. Like the SD card on the O3 unit. You don't know this, but uh, it was stuck in there for about 15 minutes. I literally am like jamming a, a screwdriver in there trying to get the SD card out of this bad boy. So uh, that part annoyed me on DJI. But anyway, let's rip it around and find out how HG LRC's Talon goes and is it comparable to the Avada 2? What's the footage like? Would you have filming? All that sort of stuff. Bit Steve. It is a pretty little compact sort of thing, but you got this little oh, yeah. cover right here. But my SD card, it was just not coming out of here. It was a nightmare to try to get that out. We are um Woo! Oh, she's a screamer. The hard part for me is I don't know who these are really suited for as well. Like I want to have fun with these, I want to rip them around, but a lot of people also just want to fly and film with them. And I think filming is their main purpose, which is not the main purpose that I like to fly for. And I look, I get everybody's different and I'm a big believer of drones have one one job to do. There is no jack of all <laughs> trades drone that does everything. Drones can do different things, but this is obviously uh, first and foremost a filming drone. I'm gonna give it a little pop out here. We'll check its performance. So, definitely uh, not a, a ripper at all. 
just a sort of like a casual little flyer might be which is probably a little bit too much for indoors to be honest although i am finding it very stable actually now that i've mentioned that i think i could fly this indoors would i want to it's the same like a whoop indoors can be really fun but there's a reason these things aren't made for you don't have like cine whoop races you might just have whoop races it's because it just doesn't feel the same trying to scream around and race with one of these it's not what it's all about let's see some of the detail uh right here's probably like a hundred snakes inside here ready <laughs> to to murder me do i dare cruise along the water go for it all right you gotta do it let's see I did check my battery. It's hard to tell actually how how high or low I am when you've got only the reflection. Really like HGLRC as a company. I don't think there's any oscillations or anything like that. Not made for some crazy freestyle. It's still definitely a ton of fun. Like it's amazing that we can do this and cruise around. It is at the end of the day, another little cine whoop with a DJI inside. So you are getting that nice video. Feels good on the sticks in terms of a camera platform. I don't think I'd be using it for anything else. Uh, there is definitely other things I prefer to fly. Uh, if I was just choosing one for fun. However, with all that said, I feel like I do have very good control of this craft right here. So maybe if I was trying to film in a specialized place or I had a specific role where I needed to be precise, careful, not too crazy speeds or anything like that, uh, this definitely really might be up some people's alley. I mean, we'll have to check what this looks like when I'm coming back, but I'm seeing all these ghost branches. It's very easy to maneuver. Um, and I haven't had any range issues or anything like that. Battery time also is surprisingly good. Like we're on three minutes right here. We're still at 3.6 volts. So it's not, good. it's not the longest flight, but also it's doing pretty good for you. You've got to consider what sort of camera it's recording. Look, I'm out a long way out here. I'm going to turn around because it's starting to, to freak me out. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, no dropouts whatsoever. Video is fine. Radio link is fine. If you need a quad, you can trust to get some filming as well. This would be really cool at like a music festival or if you needed to film somewhere, even over some people because the props are all encased. It's not a, it's definitely not a scary or an imposing drone. And I gotta say, it's not too loud as well when you consider it's carrying a proper, like a proper filming camera in here. Uh, <laughs> Pretty easy to control as well. Oh, I missed my bag. Don't land on my phone. You did. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Radio Steve, the Talon from HGLRC. Yep. Uh, what do you reckon? First impressions. I should mention too, did you notice that? The blade prop. Yeah, five of them. Yeah, yeah. No wonder it was screaming. A okay, bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not too loud for its size. I don't know if you need that sort of grippiness in the air though. Oh, but in saying that, I did mention how it felt very controllable. So yeah. maybe that does have that's some of the secret sauce. Possibly. Right well, most here. of the pushes I've ever flown have had a three or four blades. Yep. And it's been fine. Yes. Been One fine. a little feature, I left this on just for you. All of them actually came with this, but I liked it made it easy out of the box to have a little uh direction for which yep. way your prop should go on yep. so even though the props came on it i did like that so i've left it on there yeah it does get nice the first time you go pusher as well <laughs> yeah which way is that going to go so, all right first impressions what do you reckon what's it look like in the air uh it looked good in the air when you're flying it, it sounded like it had decent throttle control mm -hmm. um, obviously the weight with the, the full size o3 unit in it yep always going to be a bit of a concern but yeah it looked like it was tracking really well it looked stable when you come and hover it in front of me, it's, yeah. Yeah, I felt I felt pretty safe doing that. All right, should we put a pack on and see what it's really like? Yeah, for sure. Right. It kind of feels a bit plasticky. Well, yeah, I agree. It like is this yeah. weird plastic, almost like a mono shell with a piece of carbon yeah, yeah. strapped to the top. So like comparing that to the GoFly or GoFilm? It's some, yeah, yeah, case. yeah. There's a couple of different ones. Yep. It just sort of feels a bit more yeah, toyish. Okay. Yeah. See how it goes. All right, plug it in, get set, and let's do it. Yeah, so that, that's you, it comes with a GoPro adapter. Literally, okay. it's just a, a one square piece of plastic that screws down with the two prongs that come up. Okay, yep. And you can just attach your GoPro to yeah, that. Right Look at you getting used to where the arm switch is now. Yeah, I haven't flown pocket in a while, though. I feel the weight. Yep, and that's without the GoPro as well. It does recommend between like a 500 to 800 milliamp hour battery. So this is about a 700 milliamp, so probably, you know, in the middle. But I agree, it's not the definitely not the lightest drone. It still gets up, like you feel the momentum build on it. It's very stable, isn't it? Yeah, any oscillations or just any wobbles or anything like in the tune or nah, anything like nothing that? Nothing yet. Nah, that's good, that's smooth. My only concern with it would be the durability. But I'm a fan of HGLRC as well. Mm -hmm. the, the little 
two inch frames that I've handled of theirs have been awesome. They have, they've been around for a long time too. Like, oh yeah, look, through the trees, super stable, super easy to fly. I was a big fan of that um, GoFilm 20. Yeah. That one was really nice. That Emax one felt good. Probably a little bit more poppy than this. A they're, bit more punch. They're all very similar, aren't they? They are, yeah. What happened there? <laughs> I just jumped out. No, mate, you missed. You missed totally. Yeah, I forgot, I, I, like I forgot you can see through the goggles. No, very nice landing. Touche, <laughs> touche. Right, so besides your terrible landing, Steve, yeah. <laughs> would you would you buy one of these? That's the first question I want to know. Because they can be pretty expensive with the unit itself. Is yeah. this going to, are you going to go buy this drone tomorrow? Um, no. Okay, why not? I think the, the comparative models on the market like I was just talking about the GoFilm 20, even that Emax one that we had. Yep. I know the Emax one, I haven't done a lot with it, uh, only what I did with you that day, but the durability was through the roof. Okay. Right? Absolutely through the roof. So you like that? So if you do come unstuck or you get a crosswind or whatever, filming something and bang, you hit something hard, yep. you know it's going to stand up to it. Is this your favorite type of flying? Like, um, who's this for? Are you going to do, you, is this what you're going to go to film all the time or is it more suited for something else? Or? Well, I like to have one for every year. Every okay, yeah, right? yeah, you're one of those guys. Yeah, yep. I am. Um, what I don't like about this is the, the camera, the mount. Okay. Although we had no sort of jello or anything like that, it was yep. fine. There just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of there's, flexibility. There's, there. there's not a lot of range of motion, no, yes. It doesn't yeah. look like any sort of crazy dampening, and granted, you don't need it. It looks like there's a couple of little silicon pads on the side. Yes. But I think what the other ones offer might be a, a little bit of a one-up on this, to be honest. Okay, yeah. no worries. What about in the air? Any problems or anything you, you oh, no, liked no. or didn't like? For, like When I look at something like this, I think the intended purpose is just cruising. You know, getting that nice footage, nice and quiet, compact. So I was camping recently. Yep. This would have been awesome to fly around the campsite. Sure. You know, you're not going to harm anyone. You're no stress at all. But uh -huh. um, I think comparative markets on the model, I'd go somewhere else. Okay, so, yep. All right, to sum up, you like it, but you prefer other things. I do, yeah. All right, yeah. no worries. All right, thanks, Steve. Awesome. Now, back at the studio, here's the important part. You would have heard Steve mention some other things and some of the pros and cons about this bad boy. Would I get it or would I get something else? For me, look, I like what it does. I like the footage you get back, all that sort of stuff, but it's not as exciting. And if I didn't have the skills to pay the bills, if I didn't know how to fly FPV or I was a brand new beginner and I was already in the DJI ecosystem with some other craft, Something like the Avada 2, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, might be better suited to you. However, if you know what you're doing, you know how to fly, and you can do some cool shots with FPV that the Avada system can't do, well, I think this craft has definitely some viable options, but for me, I like this bad boy right here. So this is the GoFilm 20. It's a bit of a smaller craft. You can see them side by side. The big difference, this one is a Kedex system recording on the Moonlight camera, which is not compatible with DJI. And this one, it of course has the DJI Air unit inside. And I would say for anybody out there, it really depends on what system you've got, what you're going to move into. I do like this one. I think this footage is good enough. I think this one looks a little bit better, although it is a little bit more expensive. However, if you've got something like this with the analog version, which is significantly cheaper, then you could strap a GoPro to the top of this. So this has GoPro carrying capability, whereas uh, a little craft like the GoFly 20, even though it's one of my favorite ones, it can't carry a GoPro uh, like this bad boy can. But, and also I should mention, if you are just new to FPV and you think, man, I wanna do that, that looks like a ton of fun and you wanna get in cheaply, we just did a video of like some of the best ways to get into FPV for 2024.